so in this video now we're going to look at communicating our project plan so again it's just going to just follow along here we're opening up the same project where we left off in the last video so we're just going to show you a few of the things how you can actually get look at the plan from a different few things so first of all we're going to look at saving the project baseline so once the stakeholders have approved your project plan and you, and you need to save the approved schedule so you need to compare so you can compare the actual progress with what has actually been planned so in a in a project baseline project baseline can hold a snapshot of the approved schedule so to save a baseline we're going to go up to the top here to the project tab so we see along here and then in the schedule section we're going to click on set baseline so we're going to click on the drop down menu and click on set baseline so this little dialog pops up and um, you can see the set baseline so just by default it says baseline so but if you just have a quick click in here you'll see we can actually set up to 11 different baselines if you want to but we're just going to select a normal baseline at the moment so you know just keep it simple for the moment so we're just going to click OK. So you'll see there now, but you'll see that you might not think anything's actually happened here. So what we can do is just to sure, make sure it worked. So we go back up to this select set baseline again. So again, in project and schedules, go to set baseline, click the set baseline option. But now you see actually our baseline, it actually gives us the date that it was saved. So it was saved on Friday, the, the 12th of February. So that's today's date I'm recording this video. So it all just kind of tells you when we actually set the baseline again. So that's fine, that's what we wanted to do. So we can just click cancel, that everything is okay. So the baseline saves values for things like start date, finish date, duration, work and cost. So we can see these values and tables within the project. So one of the tables is the variance table. So if we click, click on the view tab, and then in the data section, which is here, is we have little tables, Option here, so we click on little drop down menu for tables and we can click on variance. So you see it's changed a little bit. So these tables focus on dates. We can see the plan start finish dates and the start and finish variance. So these are the differences between your baseline and what's going on now. So all the dates are the same as I have saved in the project baseline, but as your project gets underway, they will change. And, and that's how you generally save and approve schedule in a project baseline. So don't worry about it too much. You'll, you'll we'll see it more or later on in more projects, but that's just to show you what it is. So the next thing we're going to look at is actually updating our schedule. So for updating a schedule, so when your team starts working on their assignments, you have to start updating actual values in the project. So there's no point having a nice plan here, but if you're not recording the progress as you're going along, it's just going to be a nice poster to print out on the wall. So not much use. So in this example, we're going to update tasks and not assignments. So this means that we have fewer updates to do. So we're going to use the tracking table. So click on the view tab again, and then go to data. And then in the table icon, click the little drop down menu, and then you will find the choose tracking. So there we go, tracking. So give that a click. So this table has several fields for actual values. So first we need to set the status. That is the date the work is done. So like Friday, for example. So we're going to go to the project tab and then the status section, which is this one around down the end here. So click on the calendar icon. So see it here's the calendar icon. And we're going to set status date to the 23rd of April, 2021. So let's click the little drop down menu. So what did I say, the 23rd of April, I said, Friday 23rd of April, and then click OK. So now we're going to update some tasks. So we're going to go to the task tab along here. So we'll start with task two. So just click into task two, review design. So we're going to select this and on the task tab, go to schedule. So we're still in the task tab. This is the schedule section. Click the down arrow on mark on track and choose update task. So see this mark on track, so click the down arrow and update tasks. So the update task, the update task dialog box opens. So we can fill in the info now. So say the task is complete and it has ran as it should. So we're going to put in one day for the actual duration and zero day for remaining. So what do we say? Yeah, one day for actual. So you can just click the arrow for one or you can just type in one. And we're going to do zero for the remaining because it's complete. So it started so when it's supposed to, so we don't have to fill anything in. So it started on time. So the actual dates here are fine, so we're going to click OK. And hopefully, yeah, that should be OK. So the project fills in the actual start and finish date. 
and, and we have our actual remaining duration now. So for simple updates, we can also add values right into the table. So we can do this for task four. So we'll just click on task four. So let's say the start date is April 23rd. So click on the start cell and put in the date and press 23rd. So it's the actual start cell. So click in here. So we said April 23rd. Oops, too far. So April 23rd. And then press enter. And the duration of the day was going to be one. So was it? So the duration day was one day and press enter. So we're going to go along here. Actual duration is going to be one day and then hit enter and then you see it was only one day so the actual day remaining is gone and you know so project actually calculates the remaining duration which is quite handy so we'll update task six next so that's inspect equipment so let's click into the task here so the actual duration is going to be the actual duration is one day so type it in and press enter so actual duration just type in one Press enter. So that's my cat talking to me about Microsoft Project there. Hopefully he didn't hear him. If he didn't hear him, then you just think I'm talking about a cat, but he is there. So to say, yeah, so actual duration for task six was one day, so we hit enter. So project calculates the remaining zero the remaining to be zero. But what if something happened and we still have two days left? So update the table accordingly, then project can calculate the actual start date. So days remaining, we can click in here and you can see there's actual two days remaining because you know something came up. Hit enter and you see project actually updates the project itself or the, the Gantt chart itself. So it, can, it takes account of the days remaining. So it's quite good. So we can scroll over to the Gantt chart for the task. So we're in task seven. Here we go. So you can see the task is actually for the task. You can see they're kind of light blue. I think it is. So the ta yeah, the task bar is a light blue, and the progress is actually shown as a dark narrow bar within the dark within the light blue bar. So we can see what the schedule is and what it has done. So you can also add remaining work to the end column if, if that information is required. So this shows us a few quick ways that we can record progress easily. So you know. Put in the actual day, days remaining and then project will actually, with, with these little darker blue bars within the actual light blue bars, you'll see how much project progress is actually done. So again, for our first one, the project was, actual duration was one day and there's no days left remaining. So that's blue, the dark blue is fully the same length as the light blue, so that's complete. You can see in these two ones for logistics, so that's actually complete. And then the diagnostic one here is, you know, it's not fully complete yet, so there's still two days remaining. So, you know, it's just a nice way to actually kind of keep track of what what work is left to do. And again, if things change, you have to go in and just update the table and project will actually update the graph for you. So very handy. So at this stage, again, it does remind everyone just to click on the save file so you don't actually lose any of this one. So click save. Okay. So next we're going to look at is the view project schedule. So so over the life of a project, you will have to view the look at the project from many different aspects. So, so the project has many views. The Gantt chart is the most commonly used one. So you'll see here, standard Gantt chart. So on the left, we have the table with all the tasks. And on the right, we have the graphical timescale. So to see an overview of the project, we can go to the View tab. So we just click up here, there's another view we can use. So click on View. And then in the split green section, we're going to click on the timeline box. So this might have been actually already clicked by default for yours. So if it's been clicked, you would have noticed this little dialog box, this little bar kind of timeline box up here. So it might have been on yours already by default, depending which how your default settings were. So if it wasn't, just make sure you tick on the little box up here. So it'll show up. So this opens up a panel about the main view. So start and finish dates are shown, but we can add task date and milestones to highlight the key information in the project. So what we can do, it's very easy to add stuff to this. So for example, we'll select task three. So all you do is actually click in here. And once you see that little, uh, you know, the cross section the arrows, the little cross of arrows, just left click on that and drag it up onto the timeline and see it'll actually position it within the timeline where it's supposed to be and how long it's actually gonna take. So we can also add a milestone as well. So we're gonna go to the lab ready. So which one is this? So it's is task eight. So if we click in here, just make sure the whole row is highlighted and just grab this one. 
Um, sorry, let me check. Row 16. So we'll go, yeah, sorry, sorry, lab ready for training. We'll do this one instead. So click down the ta to row 16, drag it up to the timeline, and you'll see milestones actually show up as little kind of the black arrows with a little line coming down to the text underneath it. So lab ready for training on Wednesday, the 5th of, the 5th of May, 2021. Again, to turn off the timeline, all you do is go to the split screen section, go to the view, split screen, and you just click the timeline and turn it on and off. So again, turn it off now, turn it back on again. So straightforward enough. So just another thing we know on about the timeline. Once you have the timeline actually up here, if you go down to the little kind of scrolling bar on the side, if you drag along here, you'll see the actual, because the Gantt obviously doesn't fit into one section because it's so much information. But if you drag along across here, you'll see actually on the timeline, It'll actually tell you what phase on it along the timeline you are looking at on the Gantt chart. So another useful thing we can do. So the next thing we're going to look at, we're going to click, we're going to view the resources. So we're going to go back and click back to the view tab. So click on view here and then click resource usage. So here we are in the resource view. So we click on resource usage. Earlier on, we actually set this to show only the tasks that were over allocated, but obviously we fixed all the over allocated stuff. So it's obviously nothing showing anymore. So what we can do is we're going to remove that filter because there's nothing over allocated. So in the filter tab, so in view data in the filter, we're just going to click here. Let's go back to no filter for the moment. Resource usage has a summary rows for each resource and indented rows for each task assigned to that resource. So this is a good way to see how over allocation occurs, and what you might need to do to resolve them. So next on the bottom half of the Gantt chart button, so we have the Gantt chart button up here. So there's two parts, but on the bottom half, I want to click on the this one here. So click little drop down menu, and we're going to select choose uh, uh, select a tracking Gantt. So this cell has a table on the left. We'll just give it a click. Okay, so this is our tracking Gantt. So go to the task tab along the top here and click scroll to task. So here we have two sets of task bars. So the gray is the baseline schedule and the blue and the red ones show the current schedule. Having the baseline and current schedule in the view at the same time means you can see any differences between them and also see that there are any tasks that are delayed in the project. To see more info, we can select the detailed pane. So we're going to click on the view tab, which is here, and then go to the split view section. And then if you tick the details box, we see a little drop down box or a little extra table shows up down here. Now when we click onto any of the tasks, again, the more information can be seen down here. So we can things like see like cost, baseline cost, actual cost, you know, a lot more information. So it's just a useful table we actually see. Um, so now when we go back to the overall schedule, all you have to do is actually to untick the detail box. So untick this box and you're kind of back to your previous view. To view other information, we can click on the view tab again, which we're still here. And then in the data, select different tables from the drop down menu. So again, it depends on what information you're looking for. But for example, if we just click the tables here, there's lots of different ones here. There's cost, scheduling, tracking, variance, work, summary. So summary is actually a great overall as it has information like duration, dates, cost, and progress. So let's click on that one, you can see. So here we are, so as percentage complete, Cost so far, amount of work hours. So it's a, it's a nice table to actually view everything in one go. So another way to choose a table is actually go up to the top left corner and right click and select the table you want to do it. So this is the corner here. So just go up here, right click on your mouse and you'll see then a list of all the tables. So we're currently in table in summary. So we click on the tracking, that'll change. Again, we can go in here, click them again. We go back to summary. So we can play around it and see, just depending on the information you're looking for at the time. So it's quite useful, this. And again, if there's actually more information you want to add in, all you can do is you can, if you want to add in another column with extra information, you can, uh, we see here there's actually a new, add new column option here, but say if you want to put something else in, you can always click on here, right click, and then you can see, click on the insert new column, or you can hide columns, similar to what you can do in Excel. So if you kind of have an idea how to do Excel, it's kind of similar basics in how to insert columns and rows. So again, that's the case you need to do any more extra information. So, you know, this is a quick run through how to look at the views and how to change them. So at this stage, we're just going to click on our save button. So make sure we save everything we're doing along as we're going along just to be safe. So save your project now, just in case. And next now we're going to look at communicating the results with a report. So that'll be the next video. So if you haven't gotten through all this or it looks a bit off, just go back and do it. I don't think I've made any typos as I'm going along if yours is 
off, maybe let me know, but I think I didn't make any mistakes, but it's not impossible. But again, it's just a general overview of what we're doing. You're not being marked on this, so it's just to give you a basic idea how the Microsoft project works. So we'll see you in the next video for when we're going to be generating reports, okay?